Hi, it's Kermitex here again with the next instalment for building Beyond Linux from scratch 9.1. So in this video um, I'm going to attempt to build and install the X windowing system. Um, it would be just a very basic system. There's quite a number of packages to install but um, luckily a lot of this is automated so with anything like we shouldn't have too many dependencies. I think there are some, but um, from what I remember, but um, I will try and keep it down like I did last time with the um, remainder of the security packages. Just make a note of uh, any packages that need further rebuilding. So I'm in um, section 24 here of the manual, which is the X Windows part. Um, and I'll start just changing my list to that page so I can tick them off as we install them. So let's go through this. So you can see it's just an introduction there. It describes Xorg and how it's changed from X386, which was the old windowing system that was used. Now here this page is quite important. It gives an introduction to it on how it's going to be installed. Um, it says that we need wget3 for part of the automation. There's some more information there. Um, if you're going to only install necessary packages rather than the whole lot, which is what the BLFS book does, and it says it uses sudo to um, help the automation. So the first thing we're going to do is to make a subdirectory for the XOR config, so let's do that. They've called it XC, so let's keep that. Now, um, if you're trying to track what packages you've installed, you'll find that some of the dependencies are not particularly um, directly relevant to XOR. There may be libraries that are used by other packages. So you may want to still keep them in the BLFS directory rather than the XC directory because if you go looking for them um, and they're in the XC directory you might forget to look there and you expect to see them in the BLFS directory when you've downloaded them but um, that's just a personal thing. So you might see me going back to the BLFS to download some libraries there and then going back to XC to carry on with the XOR configuration. So the next bit is a description about where to put the um, Xorg uh, suite of programs. Um, it says there that common place to put it now is in user. Traditionally the old XF86 would put it in an opt directory with a version. Um, but it seems like most distros are actually putting it in the user. Uh, the BLFS instructions do give an option to install in a, a different place other than user so that's what I'm going to do it just makes managing it a little bit easier so what I'm going to do is type this in and we can set a prefix to use now they suggest uh, in opt and Oops. and then a good idea to call it xorg and then what we can do is we can create a version directory and have xorg as a link to that version directory so if you later decide to update xorg you can um, just rename the link have it pointing at a new directory with the new version so let's export that um, I'm going to go to the opt directory so I can go as the root shouldn't be anything there at the moment there isn't so we can do make the xorg-7 and then ln minus s let's do v xorg um, to xorg and you can see what we've done now is we've got our prefix which won't be visible at the moment if I come out <sighs> but, 
so the xorg prefix is set to opt xorg so if you look at opt xorg it's pointing at xorg 7 and xorg 7 is the real directory where all the programs for xorg will be um, stored as it says throughout these instructions you use the following configure switches for all of the packages create an xorg config variable to use for this parameter substitution so let's copy that so it's a common config for all the packages where there's exceptions they're built manually by hand but otherwise all the remaining packages are set up now it says we're going to create an X, uh, a profile D XORG SH that so gets run automatically every time we log in to so set these variables so that's this bit here And of course, we need to be the right user. That's better, um, actually. No, that won't have worked because the environment has been kept uh, I'm not sure if and if SU does yeah it does yeah, it doesn't work yeah so um, probably best way to do this is to SU into root So now let's just check that script that's just been created. Just see if it makes sense. Yes, it does. Xorg prefix equals opt Xorg. And then Xorg equals prefix. Xorg prefix, which has just been set. So that's fine. Now um, there's a note here about some confusion about the Xorg. Uh, the here document that we've just created, uh, we've just uh, pasted in to create this xorg.sh file regarding the backslash in front of the dollar. Um, and it's just saying that it will work if it's a here document, but if you copy this and paste it into an editor, then it'll obviously be wrong. That, that escape is for, for the here document. If you install sudo, ensure that xorg prefix and xorg config are available in sudo environment. So as a root user, run the following command. So let's get that command. And paste that in. If you've decided not to use a standard prefix, be sure to add xorg prefix bin to your path environment where an xorg prefix lib package config and xorg prefix share package config to your package config path variable. It's also helped to specify additional paths for GCC and an include directory for the AC local program. Issuing the following programs, commands, sorry, as a user, as a root user. Um, so th that's what we've got to do because I'll, I'll skip to this note. It says if you decide to use the standard pre user prefix, you can omit the remainder of this page. So we're not doing user. So let's copy this and paste it in. Oops. Okay, now it says the above script needs to be activated. Normally it'd be automatic at login, but to activate it now as regular user runs, source, etc. So let's go back to regular user. Source forward slash etc profile dot 
D xorg.sh. So let's just check we still have the two prefixes for xorg config. That looks good. And in fact the prefix is there correct. So I imagine this prefix will be correct as well. And it is. So that's good. You should now also add prefix lib to the etc ldso conf file again as a root user issue the following. So let's become the root user again. ldso.conf You should also modify etc mandb conf so that's the next command to copy. Some applications look for shared files in user share x11, create symbolic links for publications root user. Building KDE, make some files, look for xorg in places other than xorg prefix, allow CMake to find xorg with, and there's another option there. So I'm going to be building KDE, so I'll definitely want this link. Yep, that's okay. So I'll come out of root. We obviously haven't got any files yet. So we carry on to two util macros. Download safety disk and we can go back. So the XOR build, build environment, that's where we've just come from. Just check that for sure. Yep, it is. So a lot of it's going to be quite similar. Um, oh, right, of course, what I need to do is to. Um, that that download has obviously gone into the directory above. So let me move until macros here, and I'm going to open up another window just to save having to remember what directory I'm in or where what directory I'm downloading, and I'm going to. Oh, um, I was going to change directory to the sources BLFS XC. So my third terminal is for downloading downloading to uh, the X, XORG XC directory. So read online. Scroll to section twenty-four. Retail macros and on my number two I'm going to go back to the main menu or main contents rather and we can start with the oops start with the configure command uh, of course got to extract it first a lot of these modules are quite tiny so be a lot of typing without much of a break in between. Don't worry about that disabled static, it's needed for some packages but not for others. So there's no um, test suite, so we do sudo minus e make install. And that package is done. Next one we've got Xorg Proto. So I'm going to go to the next one and download it. A 
you can see it's got a requirement for util macros and it's got other dependencies as well so this is where I was saying that some of these dependencies um, aren't actually part of xorg so util macros is obviously because we just built it but these other others aren't so this needs fop again and fop was one that needed windows so what I'm going to do is quickly put this down in my list and packages to reinstall again it's for documentation right so um, this is rebuild Xorg proto of the fob so I'm just going to look at these other ones um, I'm not sure the BXSLT I'm pretty sure we've done I'm not sure and I'm not sure about ASCII doc so this is chapter 9 this is in so I can check in my list chapter 9 wonder 134 yeah that's done XML TOs in chapter 49. Right, the other that hasn't been installed yet. So that needs. Again, this is another one to re reinstall. Dot by XML 4.5. I'm pretty sure we did that one. Yes, we did. XSL 1792. We did that one. XSLT we just looked at. This has got FOP again. And either links or links so that's ready to build and I will need to rebuild it too so rebuild xorg uh, sorry xml to after Then we've got one called ASCII doc, the Python 2.7 we've got, there's no more requirements, so we can go ahead and do these. So this is section 11. So I'm back on my second terminal, so I've still got the XORG stuff in the third terminal. Back on the second, ASCII doc 8.69. So this is getting saved back into the normal BLFS directory, which is why I've got it separate from the links, which is set to default download into the XC directory in BLFS. Right, let's see what options this has got. It's got none. It's quite straightforward installation. So let's go back. And let's copy the configure and make. That's quick. Blimey, that is, that's a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Let me just run make again. Yeah, it's definitely done the job. Um, Right, so sudo make install and sudo make docs. 
It's done. Okay, now I can go to XMLTO. Uh, let me cross that one off. ASCII doc. XMLTO is in 49. So this, the completion of this tool, according to my list, apart from two different versions of DocBook XML, would complete all the different packages in section 49 for XML. So let's go to the end. There it is there. Download. Save. So Tama is XVF XMLTO. So let's have a look at this. There's no extra config. Alright. Um, So although we haven't got links, this links variable is fine. Okay, let's test that. That's passed. It looks like that package is done. So now we can go back to Xorg Proto. So I'll CD into XC. I think we downloaded it. Yes, there it is. So let's extract it. Extra commands. So F3, Renex or Proto. Let's copy these commands here to build and install it. Now it's done. Sure, those variables still exist. Yeah, we do. Just in case, the yeah, the installation does need them. You can see the XOR prefix here, so it's important to check if you're unsure, or just as a sanity check, that these variables exist. That's installed. Let's come out of that one. So we've created a build directory, so we've got to go up one and up again. So it's up, oops, up two altogether. And now we can move on to the next file, which is libxau. And this has got a requirement the package was just built, so we can just carry on. You can see each one of these files are tiny. We do get to a point where we do start to automate a lot of this, so it's just that the installation of these is a little bit different. So 
So let's copy that ready to build. And build it. Oops. Let's copy that again. Oh, why is that not working? Seems like the um, mouse driver's gone a bit funny. Let me um, try and fix this. Let's try restarting the server. So if it fixes it. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I might have pressed some combination of buttons on the mouse that's caused that to go a bit funny. As you see, just restarting the server fixes it. So, configure and make. Make check. It's passed. sudo minus e make install. It's all done. So next we've got Libex DMCP and again it's another one to rebuild for the documentation. Uh, Libex DMCP So yeah, the other two, obviously we've got XML here we just installed, X, LibXSL2 we installed last time. Okay, so let's start installing it. No test suite for this one, so I'll just do a sudo make install. And it's done. Now we need XCB Proto, which needs libxml2. So let's have a look at that one. Needs Python 2, ICU 6.5. Okay, is this one I've done before? Oh yes, yeah, we've we've got ICU 6.5 and it's pending to be reinstalled as well. Okay. LibXML2. Uh, chapter 9. So not, yeah, we've done that one as well, so that's good. So there's nothing else to do for this one. We can just go and fetch it. Oh, what have I 
put on there. Okay, so there's just a quick configure for this one. Install. Done. 